First, fill out your order form. Clearly write your name and some way to contact you, along with any special instructions, including French folded pages, elements that fall close to the crop area, different size pages, etc. We will need a cover to wrap around your book. Make sure you define the spine area in some way. Pencil marks are fine. We will need you to measure from the front edge of the spine to the edge of the paper, not the design. Then from the back edge of the spine to the other edge of the paper. If you, if you can include a bleed, extra design or color outside the crop area, that is awesome and will tend to make for a cleaner and better book. Make sure your inside pages fit within the spine area. Measure the actual stack of inside pages, or guts. This one looks to be about 3 eighths of an inch, so I will write that on my order form in the area for spine width. Making accurate measurements is key here to getting a crisp spine. If rulers are scary or somehow foreign to you, you may put something like seven and a half inches plus two little lines, and I will be able to match that when I go to crease the cover. Try not to round up or down just because you don't know what the actual measurement is. Then write those measurements on the order form in the correct spots. Then measure the final size your book will be and mark that on the order form under final trim size. When you have all the measurements done and filled out, you will pass it on to us for final confirmation of the measurements and binding. You will also give us the cover. We recommend using a cardstock or something that's thicker than your inside pages and your stack of inside pages. Uh, make sure that everything is untrimmed and with crop marks if possible. Try to keep any design elements from getting too close to the edges to avoid their getting cut off or lost in the spine, making sure that any page numbers or anything that could get lost will not. I will now show you why we need those measurements. This is the cover creaser. This is how we will get a nice crisp edge to the spine. It also puts an extra crease in the cover so you might easily open the book without cracking the glue. I will reference your measurements and adjust the creaser to match them precisely. This is why we need your measurements to be as exact as possible. I will make the first crease, which will not be on the spine edge. This is for easy opening of the book. I then flip the cover over to make the actual spine crease. The creaser makes valley folds. I can now fold it easily for a nice sharp spine edge. And on to the back creases with the same process. I reference your measurements, adjust, and crease. Now we have a nice clean spine to go into the binder. With our cover creased, I give the front edge a final squeeze before going into the binder. It goes in, spine edge down, front of the book hitting the back. I will make any final adjustments according to the size of the book. Make sure your book isn't any smaller than 5 inches so it fits in here nicely. I will stamp the inside pages down to assure they all hit the glue, and place them spine edge down inside the cover gently tapping them toward the bar at the top and down into the cover. They are then clamped into place, making sure that all of the pages are flat against the cover. I flip them over then and gently fold back the cover and hold it out of the way. First I run the rougher over the spine to make the edge of the pages a little rough so that they will hold the glue easier. I will make sure that that didn't throw any of the pages out of whack and, if necessary, reset them so that they are all flat against the spine. Now for the glue. We need to wait 20 minutes for the glue to melt enough to move the pot. I can then pass the glue pot over the pages, usually two or three times depending on the size of the book. I then flip it over and squeeze for about 15 seconds to make sure the glue sets and that the spine will dry with a nice flat edge. I will carefully unclamp the book and give it another squeeze for good measure. If everything went to plan, all measurements were correct and nothing crazy happens, the book should come out like this, with a nice crisp spine. There will be glue sticking out of the edges, which we will cut off when we trim the book to final size.
It's best to leave everything untrimmed so we can tr cut off the final three sides when it's dry in about 10 minutes. I will now check your measurements for the final trim size and cut this bad boy down. I always double check that your final trim size matches where any crop marks lay. Measure twice, cut once. I'm going to cut into the spine to assure a nice clean cut. We always put a trim pad on top of your book so we don't crush that nice crisp spine. I clamp it down tight so that it doesn't move around and then shut the lid before cutting. This is where a bleed comes in handy to assure that there is no random white space on the edges. Looks like I can cut off a tiny bit more here though. So I adjust and cut off a tiny sliver more. I then flip the book to cut into the spine again. The cutter has a ruler on it so I can match the size exactly to your measurements. With the top and bottom cut, I will make sure that that looks okay before cutting off the final edge. Now we have our finished book. Look again at where I mentioned before that those elements might get lost. Looks like they did. There you have it, a perfect bound book.